If you subscribe to the channel or if you're an aviation enthusiast in general, you know the Boeing 787 has been experiencing some growing pains over the past few years. And to Boeing's credit, they have not shied away from taking responsibility for the defects and they've been going over the Dreamliner with a fine tooth comb trying to resolve the various issues. However, the problem is that the deeper Boeing digs in search of answers, the more problems they find. And now comes word that they found a problem with the revolutionary carbon composite wing design of the 787 and it could be a big problem for Boeing as if they didn't have enough already. Boeing's latest Dreamliner headache is next, on Maximus. Well, a big season's greetings and happy holidays. Everybody, Maximus here. I hope you're all doing well, wherever you may be all around this great big world of ours. Well, around this time of year, I'd love to be bringing great tidings of joy to Boeing, but unfortunately, it looks like there's going to be yet more coal in the stocking. Yeah, I know it's not even Thanksgiving yet, but I didn't have a Thanksgiving analogy. And besides, it's close enough to Christmas, it works. And be sure to stick around till the end because I'm finally going to give you my personal commentary and thoughts on the Dreamliner program, something I don't normally do. So let's recap briefly. So far on the Dreamliner, there have been issues with the carbon composite fuselage fittings, shim and skin flatness issues, nose composite pressure bulkhead fitting issues, rear fuselage composite joint issues, and faulty titanium parts from an Italian factory. Now in a new memo to Boeing this month that has been seen by the Seattle Times, it states that the latest issues were identified earlier this year. Boeing found that the composite wings produced by Mitsubishi Heavy Industries had been contaminated with what's called PTFE or polytetrafluoroethylene. This could affect the bonding process in an autoclave of composite subassemblies and parts inside the wing to the surface. The memo reportedly explains that while the bonding quality was affected by the contamination, Boeing said it was still within design limits. But subsequent investigation by Boeing this October found out that not only has Mitsubishi Heavy Industries suffered from PTFE contamination on the wings, but also the suppliers of fuselage sections, which are Leonardo, Kawasaki Heavy Industries, and Spirit Aero Systems, and also those of the tail section, which includes Leonardo and Boeing itself. The FAA memo also identifies a problem of gaps around the doors in the Leonardo-produced aft fuselage sections that are too big. The FAA says it isn't convinced by the standards of the execution of the work and wants Boeing to come up with a solution that guarantees that the structure around the doors meets the design requirements. As has been the case with the other quality issues that involve the Dreamliner since 2019, the FAA is demanding that Boeing come up with a convincing solution to the problems. Until the agency is satisfied, it will not release the 787 for production and deliveries. Spirit Aerosystems, who makes the 787's unique carbon composite fuselage, said that it had stopped producing Dreamliner parts, notably the nose section, and even Boeing itself has now stopped production until further notice. At the Dubai Air Show earlier this month, Boeing told Air Insight that we continue to do meticulous work every step of the way. We are looking at the airplane nose to tail and we are sure that we pressure test every single aspect. We are working with the FAA on a daily basis, making sure they understand the analysis and any rework that is required. We are doing it first to our own satisfaction and second to the satisfaction of the regulator. I couldn't give you a schedule right now, they said. We will get it done when we get it done, they concluded. According to Air Insight, Boeing has over 100 undelivered 787s, of which an unspecified number will need rework to solve the earlier shimming issues on the fuselage and forward pressure bulkhead. It isn't known to what extent the rework now also includes the bonding issues, which will be very difficult to do. Boeing said in October that the 787 issues this year will result in some $1 billion in abnormal costs. Okay, so then what do I, Maximus, personally think about the situation? With the creation of the 787 Dreamliner, 
Boeing created a radical, revolutionary, brand new aircraft that had never been seen in commercial aviation before. For over 100 years, airplanes were made out of safe and reliable aluminum. But Boeing took a chance and bet the future of the company on the fact that carbon composites were going to be the future of aviation. And they proved that to be 100% true with the Dreamliner. Not only that, but Boeing led the way so that Airbus could come along after them and tweak and assess certain aspects of carbon composite design to improve on it and make it even better. Is that because Airbus is better or smarter than Boeing? Absolutely not. It's because Boeing took the risk to be the first to do it. But now after the fact and with the benefit of hindsight, Airbus has the ability to improve on what Boeing started. That's why being first isn't always the best. Because along with the good, there ultimately is the bad. You have to accept the fact that with new methods and materials, there will be unanticipated new challenges and obstacles that would surely arise. And that's exactly what happened with the 787, and why Boeing is where it finds itself today with the Dreamliner. Yes, Boeing has been a popular target since the MAX disasters, and rightly so. However, I think when it comes to the 787, some of that criticism, and yes, much of it from me, yours truly, isn't always fair. As they say, sometimes a duck is just a duck. Sometimes material flaws aren't any one person or company's fault. It's just a result of trial and error. So it makes sense that the more Boeing digs into the Dreamliner, the more problems they're going to find. But what will be the final judge of Boeing's success or failure with the Dreamliner will be how they ultimately correct the problems. Because the fact remains that there hasn't been a Dreamliner crash or a single fatality related to the performance of the Dreamliner since its first commercial flight over 12 years ago. And airlines do love the aircraft and also want it to succeed. But as they say, time is money. So the question is, are airlines willing to wait as long as it might take to right the ship before they run out of patience and move on to the new girl, Airbus. Well, that's what I think. Now, I'd like to hear what you have to say. Am I wrong? Tell me. Do you agree? Tell me that also. Do you have a different opinion? Well, let me know that too. Well, I'd like to wish a happy Thanksgiving to all of my American subscribers. And to the rest of you, if you're celebrating a holiday this week, cheers to you too. And of course, on your way out, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and ring the bell. And remember, leave the rubber on the runway and your troubles on the ground. And I will see you next time. In the air. Yeah. This is Maximus. <laughs>